there's always call for optimism when people are actually going to get into the same location and start talking. But the previous talks were two years ago in Kuwait. They took place for 108 days and went nowhere. And even these talks, the two major warring sides are not apparently scheduled to meet face to face. So the hopes are not that high, but at least it's a start. I should just add that it, it does in fact seem that the Houthis have not yet turned up for the talks. They've been delayed and the UN Special Envoy is still hopeful that they will actually make it out there. But uh, it just shows you how difficult to process this is going to be. How much are ordinary Yemenis playing the, the price, if you will, for a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran? Well, as you say, yes. Ordinary Yemenis are the ones who are bearing the brunt of this war. We have about 80% of Yemen's 28 million strong population in need of humanitarian assistance. So it's very, very bleak for the actual people. And the war has become very complicated. As you say, we have Iran backing, to a limited extent, the Houthi rebels, and we have Saudi Arabia and a Sunni-led coalition backing the Yemeni government. They're complicated even further by the fact that several human rights groups have criticised the West for their role, not least in supplying arms to Saudi Arabia. Yes, the talks in Geneva are coming on the back of some very significant developments. One is the release of a United Nations report a couple of weeks ago, which actually stated outright that there could be war crimes committed on both sides. So not just the Houthis, but also on the side of the Saudi-led coalition, to which Significant countries in the West, including the U United States and the United Kingdom, are supplying arms. So this will certainly sharpen the focus of the Geneva talks.